And thanks everybody for the introductions and thank you for being here again. Uh, I'd like to introduce to some and present to others, Mr. Joel Hill, our guest speaker for today, founder of Kimmick Group. Uh, I met Mr. Hill through uh, Bonnie here in the, in the chamber. We've had a couple of wonderful conversations. Um, Mr. Hill is very, um, how can I say it? He has a love for helping small businesses to be able to protect themselves, to grow, to have other have have access to all, as you would say, a one-stop shop resource. So in saying all that, I would like to go ahead and turn the floor over for a couple of minutes to Mr. Hill, allow him to introduce, get, welcome everybody to introduce yourself. And Mr. Hill, just give a little background about you know, who you are and where you come from. And what, what also, you could also answer the question of what, what, what made you get started in doing the business that you're, that you're doing now. So Mr. Hill, go ahead. You have the floor, sir. Well, thank you, uh, Christian. And uh, thank you, Bonnie, uh, uh, as well as thank the chamber for this opportunity to, to share with you uh, my journey uh, as a small business owner. Um, uh, as, as Christian asked me, you know, to share a little bit about myself, uh, I'm a, a military veteran, 22 years in the Air Force as an intelligence officer. Uh, and after the Air Force, I worked 10 years uh, for the federal government as an investigator uh, with the Department of Education, uh, Department of Navy, and the uh, Inspector General's Office. So uh, in 20, and so how I started this in 2014, I was doing a, a large investigation uh, on an individual, uh, the genesis of this, again, let me go back a little bit, started in 2014. So uh, I am the president of Berean Investigations. Berean Investigations is a full service background screening, drug testing, fingerprinting, employee assessment company. And we provided those services, you know, on site uh, to our clients. Uh, so about a year ago, and actually prior to um, uh, COVID hitting, the re investigations merged with Kimmick Group. So now we are part of Kimmick Group, which is nothing more than uh, a, a confederation, so to speak, of trusted businesses, of people that we know, like, and trust who have been vetted. And so not only in addition to me being able to provide the traditional employee screening services for our clients, we are uh, now able to offer other ancillary products and services through a trusted network of vendors, such as uh, the Marks Group. If you look on my uh, website, kidneygroup.com, you see some of the trusted vendors that we have partnered with throughout the years. And that is one of the primary key uh, things of my actual pivot is in, in partnerships. And I think Marcy may have mentioned that uh, she knows me and actually uh, she was uh, actually kind of sort of the genesis of, of me looking to partnerships because I think we were talking uh, about partnerships and actually uh, you did the energy assessments. Is that correct, uh, Marcy? Uh, I don't exactly remember. Like we were talking about solar. We talked about a lot of things. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So uh, I was having an energy audit done, I think, and it was solar and actually they came out to my house and, and you know, speaking of making a pivot, uh, her company, I think they actually employed one of the first use of drones to do assessments of whether or not, you know, your house was uh, uh, compatible or suitable for, for solar. So even that right there is a, is a pivot. So um, I'm here today uh, to talk to you as a small business owner who basically started uh, providing products and services, unlike any other uh, background screening uh, company out there. And there are many people uh, like me uh, who, uh, you know, are just, you know, small business owners. And so I've been in the community uh, doing that uh, since 2014. I work with a lot of the chamber members. What started me getting into this company as I was alluding to earlier was basically um, doing investigations, especially, especially at the federal level. Uh, I found a lack of uh, integrity and accountability in the process. And it was not all the time transparent. And so uh, when I went into small business, I wanted to make sure that the products and services that we offer, uh, that the customer could expect, you know, excellence in service. Uh, they could expect personalized service. They can expect transparency. And so all of that being said, you know, I'm here today to talk to you about, you know, our mission. And uh, because our mission really is to help transform small businesses, brick and mortar locations to execute a pivot for global security encrypted virtual enterprise. And I'm not a technical person. 
But what I have discovered, one technical platform service and application that has been enabled me to transform my business completely from the back end to the front end in terms of uh, uh, being able to audit my books, being able to do social media, uh, being able to do analytics, all those things uh, in a dashboard-like format. And I found that helpful because prior to that, and, and, and some of you probably can appreciate this, um, in order to stay on top of my business, I started you know, with two employees and then uh, you know, obviously COVID hit and it came down to just me. So I was playing a role of CFO, CEO, marketing expert, janitor, and just about every position there was uh, in my business whilst trying to grow my business. And so uh, the platforms uh, that, you know, uh, I was using, some of them were, and some of you may be familiar with the term siloed. And so I was using a calendar function from this vendor. I, I was using a CRM function from another vendor. I was using a, a, a vendor to, you know, keep my, to keep a spreadsheet on, on certain inventory items. Uh, and obviously then I was using another platform uh, to do, you know, social media postings and graphics and things of that nature. All, all the while paying uh, enormous subscription fees for each of those siloed uh, uh, capabilities. So what has helped us uh, is, is basically about uh, probably two years ago, I started exploring this platform called Zoho. Uh, and if you, and one of the things I want to mention is that there's a, I, I'm going, going to give you a bonus uh, at the end of this. I'm gonna uh, share with you uh, a capability to get a 30 day free trial of this product. But in the meantime, I want to tell you what it has allowed me to do. Uh, and so not only has it allowed me to you know, continue to automate and streamline my business functions, uh, it has allowed me to provide other products and services out of that to systematize and monetize everything that I'm doing in my, in my business. So uh, I wanted to share with you the top five things uh, that uh, it has allowed. And uh, let's see if I can get this on my screen. So uh, again, uh, Kimmy Group, we, we are a vendor-based uh, provider of trusted uh, services. And we have over 200 years of experience in uh, background screening, drug testing, fin fingerprinting, uh, working with nonprofits and uh, healthcare uh, providers. And so uh, every employer who uh, employs employees they're still responsible and still need to do due diligence in hiring employees. So that's one of the reasons why my business model is almost somewhat recession proof. As long as people are hiring, uh, you know, there will be a need to continue to do background checks. And especially now it's more so than ever in, in the COVID environment where uh, one of my clients, they, uh, I was coming on site doing the background screening, drug testing, fingerprinting, employee assessments, all of those things were done on site. And obviously it was person to person contact, but during COVID we had to reimagine that particular business model. So the platform that I began to use enabled me to do that because now what we're able to do because of the national level associations that we have with, we had to form a national level uh, uh, association with uh, LabCorp and Quest. So now all we do now is send a link to the individual applicant, they fill it out and they take it to the nearest LabCorp Quest. And those people are more equipped than I am to provide that service, although it's still under my account and my client is billed you know, uh, for, for those services through, through my business. So we're able to do that because of uh, we created those partnerships and we had to start creating those partnerships because it was part of our survival plan. Um, um, I am not, you know, uh, able to, you know, go out, provide those services, especially in this environment. My, my clients still had requirements to hire people. It was a social services organization. And so now, stop, right there. stop right there, Mr. Hill. Yes, I, sure. I don't want to, I don't want to pass something that you just said uh, that I caught and I want to hit on it while you're, while you're there. And that was when you said partnerships. Partnerships begin to help help save your business and to be able for you to keep going, especially in this uh, time of the pandemic that we're in. How important do you think it is for other for businesses to have 
partnerships during this time to help one another to keep going and to keep growing during the times that we're in and also to be able to uh, make that shift or pivot as some would say or however they're looking at it to be able to keep going in, the, in, in, in business as we're in today? Uh, that's a great question. And not only is it a great question, it is part of our primary reasons for continued success. Because I found that I could not do all the things I needed to do alone. I could not provide all the products and services that I need to provide. I could not uh, reimagine and become creative in how I supported my clients during this time of COVID. So uh, uh, I formed partnerships with not only my clients, but with other social services organizations. Uh, I find partnerships with not only, and I say not as the partnerships, but I started to reach out to my local government. I've had meetings with our county commissioner. I've talked to the economic development uh, office, worked with them, in the, and they have been able to get funding in order for me to help do this. So I have to give credit to the Charles County uh, Economic Development Department, as well as our local uh, Charles County uh, commissioners for being able to provide those resources to help me do this pivot you know, through a grant. And so had not I done that, had not I reached out to, to those people, I told them what I was trying to do, what I was building. And, and so they basically came on board and came alongside and, and uh, and uh, they were able to point me in the right directions of a resource. There are a lot of other resources out there in terms of partnerships. You can partner with the SBDC, the uh, uh, Southern Maryland Business Development Center, and um, not only them, but the uh, Workforce Development Center. Um, I wish there were more of an intentional and consistent uh, relationship between those entities and the institutions, but I, I found, and, and those are some things that I wanted to talk uh, to my uh, elect elected local officials about. But in the meantime, I had to reach out on my own to make those connections. And so um, one of the things uh, that I had to reimagine was we did uh, on-site drug uh, testing. Well, I was no longer able to do that. So I reached out to another vendor who provided mobile drug testing services. So we created and mm -hmm. formed a partnership. And so now if I have a client that needs that, I'm able to basically uh, sub, sub that job to them under Kimmick Group uh, business entity. And so, but, uh, again, uh, there are things that have to be put in place prior to that. So one of the things that, you know, Bonnie uh, asked me to do uh, early on was for me to start looking at some other type of training. And one of the types of training uh, that I wanted to look at was uh, how to form effective partnerships. And so that, that's a uh, webinar or a course that, you know, is just looking for a sponsor uh, to be able to do that. But I think it'd be helpful and I can certainly share how I was able to do that because it does involve creating, uh, and this is an area that I wasn't gonna talk about, but you, you have to be sure you, you protect your intellectual property and your partner understands that. So did I answer your question, Christian? Yes, because um, yeah, uh, we, we got about five minutes here because I want to be able to give the, give the guests a chance to, uh, to uh, 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 chime in, um, you know, to speak on some things here. So, okay, uh, I'll finish up. I, um, yes, go ahead. So, go ahead and finish up, and then I'll ask. Okay, and, and so that. hopefully, what you're seeing on the screen is basically how I pivoted my business in terms of you know my investment in technology, the technology stack that I invested in, specifically the Zoho technology stack, which allowed me really to focus on the the top five things that were keeping me up at night. And that was, you know, my books, my invoicing, how I sent out, you know, and working with my, uh, connecting it to my banking information. Also this, my sales uh, and CRM, client relationship management software uh, and analytics in terms of who's actually visiting my website and how effective uh, were my uh, social media campaigns I was running. And also uh, I needed a product to generate uh, social media content uh, in, in order to do an automated marketing. And one of the things we just finished talking about was collaboration and teaming. And that was very important. So that, that was a very great question. And because I did, you know, uh, reimagine my business by partnering with other people who can provide other products and services that, that only amplify my capability uh, in terms of what I was doing. And one of the other things, the big things that I, I uh, am very big in because uh, my background is really knowledge management 
if anyone ever looked at Shark Tank, you know, they always wanted to know, do you know your numbers? And that's very important. And a lot of times I didn't know my numbers in, in, until I was able to look at, uh, you know, my books function in terms of uh, the overall picture uh, that gave me the ability to understand my profit and loss, understand my inventory, understand my profit margins. And so all those things were automated uh, through the uh, actual platform uh, that I was using. And so uh, I, I, you know, I, I'm not, I'm a, I have to, you know, disclaimer, uh, this is, may not be for everyone, uh, but what it has done for me uh, has completely automated my business. It has made me a global entity. But one of the things, if you look at my uh, website, uh, it says uh, Kimmy Group, globally connected, locally directed, because now I work with vendors in the Philippines. I work with vendors in, in Turkey. I, I have virtual assistants all over the world, and I'm able to, to manage and control uh, all those assets uh, through this uh, particular platform. And so uh, thus is my pivot. And the last thing I want to say about pivot, a lot of people have heard the term pivot, but I've actually given it a, 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 a name, and it's what I call P-I-V-O-T. It's a portfolio of integrated value-oriented technologies. And so that is my pivot and uh, that's my story. And uh, I welcome any questions you may have. <laughs> well, definitely, Mr. Hill, we appreciate uh, the information that you was able to share with us in this, uh, in this um, short time that you put together for us. Um, but one of the things I got, I, I had gotten out of this that I wrote down with partnerships and the way small businesses are now reinvesting into themselves to continue to being able to, um, to, uh, uh, to grow and uh, strive in, through this new way of that we're doing business now. And that we're probably going to continue on doing business for the, uh, for years to come. Um, so what I could do now is open the floor up to some to the guests to give some insight on what they heard or what they enjoy, what they heard, or if they have any questions for Mr. Hill as well. You know, Christian, you were, you picked up on Joel's comments about partnering and I heard that loud and clear as well. Of course, that's what chambers are. That we, mm -hmm. We're all about partnering and collaborating and that sort of thing. But uh, Sam, your business is one that really strikes me as being a collaborator. You have a lot of vendors there at the mm -hmm. ballpark. You use a lot of different kinds of uh, partner. You have a lot of different kinds of partnerships and, and then all the partnerships you have within the community as well. I imagine yours is one that has really got a lot of potential for these types of um, tools that Joel was talking about and being able to separate out some of the, the functions of the uh, Blue Crabs business the way he has. I really like your use of the, uh, the word pivot, Joel, the way you, you broke that out. But Sam, looking at those, looking at Joel's top stack uh, challenges, I imagine there are some of those that you've had to rethink and redo during this pandemic as well. Am I right? Yeah. I mean, you know, we only get like six months of revenue um, each year, pretty, pretty much. Um, and all six months of those were completely taken away 100%. So it was really, um, it's been really tough for us, but yeah, pretty much everything that we've done and everything that we know in the past year has been completely changed. And I know in your case, you've had to actually combine some functions. You and others there have had to take on new responsibilities and there wasn't quite the same division as there had been before and who was doing what. Mm -hmm. Are you seeing that in your business too, Marcy? Well, uh, mm -hmm. due to COVID, we, 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 we found out how fast we can move and pull things together. It was pretty amazing. Um, once everything went down, um, you know, we, we did the PPE for our crew. We are essential. So, um, but we basically, everybody was able to go home within a, you know, a day or two and be totally set up from home. And uh, it actually forced us, uh, for those of us that were, <laughs> uh, more resistant to, you know, working on Google Drive and, and it, now all of us have really, uh, within the office, have re really moved forward, forward with um, the way we need to do business now. But we were kicking and screaming. <laughs> I was one of them. <laughs> I don't know if that answered your question, but. It did. Christian, if I could ask Joel a question. And then ahead, I'll, you, you I'll back off a little bit. Joel, are you you're finding fine. that these partners that you are working with, these folks that you've been able to bring together to provide all this variety of services, are you finding that they are 
<coughs> pardon me, getting creative in how they're uh, rethinking their re restructuring their businesses and finding new ways to partner. Absolutely. Well, well, that's a great question. And um, every business has specific requirements and as such, they should, you know, personalize their tech stack to address those problems. But uh, what I did, again, through the Berean Trusted Network and through the Trusted Network of Vendors and Partners, what, that we are now operating off a common platform. So we are able to see into each other's uh, books or areas that we allow through uh you know, access. We can allow access. I can allow access to a vendor if he wants to see how his, you know, products or services that he's provided me are performing. He can see that section of my book. So this technology stack, uh, what it does is it, it, it synchronizes everything from the back end to the front end. So it's a complete solution. And so uh, when, when I say my partnership, uh, we operate off a common framework. And so that I think uh, is the key uh, to uh, what we're trying to offer other businesses to be able to do that. So if you do have a vendor that you need to establish a different relationship with, or you meet, you, you're not able to meet your payments, uh, you know, we have a saying, we, we, we try to only do business with people we know, like, and trust. Because part of our relationship is, it's, it's mutual, it's based on mutuality, continuity, reciprocity, but more importantly, empathy. And so even though we are global, we are we try to find vendors that are closer to home that we can work with. So uh, everything I'm doing, one of the things I failed to mention is that this whole process re require a change in behavior and a change of uh, behaviors for, for all of us. So we had to really trust each other. Uh, and, and, and that's, you know, I, I, it's almost like, it's antiviral for us because we're not concerned about rapid growth, but more of a sustained partnership or and strategic relationship. Yeah, Christian, um, what about your business? You're you're in a totally different industry. Um, your your one of your jobs that you do is in a a totally different realm. There's not much that company can do for partnerships and that sort of thing, is it? You might want yeah. to. Uh -uh. Tell folks what that is, because I, I won't do a good uh, job. Tell folks what that is, because I won't do a good job. Oh, I'm the um, I'm a, uh, operations power manager for uh, Wamada's, uh, so people know it as Metro's um, uh, power uh, uh, power department um, to ensure that you know all, all power distribution for Metro, including to the third rail for the trains, is distributed or, or maintenance wise and everything. And they, yeah, there's really there's really um, not much uh, partnership or collaboration that can, that could or can be done uh, for us. So we, we just had to do what we could do to weather the storm to get through. And um, the one thing, the one thing that was great that did happen was we were, we was getting ready to lay off like almost 4,000 employees. Um, and that's not counting the ones that took the voluntary uh, retirement. And Thank goodness the bill got passed, which allowed us to get over eight, uh, close to eight hundred million dollars in funding. So therefore, the GM canceled uh, the layoffs, and uh, so that was a big help because if, if he didn't, uh, right now four thousand employees would have been sitting home. So um, you know, like I said, this pandemic took a toll of healing everybody. But now, in with Legal Shield, what we was able to do, what they did was everything went to. Uh, Zoom. Everything we do now is via Zoom. Even our um, upcoming international conference is going to be via Zoom. And they were able to pull it off last year when they started it back la uh, last April. So, um, you know, that we, we had to change and shift in how we, you know, especially being in the, the kind of business that we are, you know, you more want to be people, uh, a people person, you know, your face to face is via the computer. And, you know, sometimes we like to be hands on face to face. So right now, you know, we had to shift in that area, uh, but actually uh, we grew 40% uh, since April of last year. So, you know, even doing that shift because a lot of people are more stay at home and everything else now. So that's how, you know, we had to, we had to do it uh, uh, as well. Bunny, if I could just jump in real quick and, uh, and just kind of really emphasize the uh, practicality of what Christian talked about in the second thing in, in Legal Shield. 
Legal Shield is also we found is also a partner uh, because I have two accounts. I have a business account and I have a Legal Shield, and, and Christian's not paying me to say this either. So, but, I, <laughs> I, I, <laughs> but, <laughs> but but what I found is because when we started developing this last year, I needed access quickly to attorneys who were able to help me. Uh, with my protection of my intellectual property. So I reached out to Legal Shield and some of my intellectual property is not protected. I can and call. And so uh, Berea Trusted Network and Kimmy Group, we, that's how we got our trademarks. Uh, one, one thing I did, and I have to say this, I used a trademark attorney uh, early on, charged me a ton of money. It, it was, it was, I was angry. And then I went to Legal Shield and I was able to get uh, the, my other patents and uh, trademarks for a third of what I paid, you know, uh, uh, attorney. Mm -hmm. So, so uh, as far as I'm concerned, you know, I, I consider uh, even Legal Shield is a trusted vendor that is part of my network, and we're able to integrate that those products and services in into our business function also as a small business. I appreciate that, Mr. Hill. I think I might go ahead and send a check in the mail to you now, but I. <laughs> <laughs> But I do appreciate that. Um, we're now, uh, oh, got, got about five minutes. Um, what I'd like Mr. Hill to do, I know he said he did have something he'd like to offer to the guests that are here and those that may hear this uh, recording. So Mr. Hill, can you go ahead and uh, do that and say any parting words? And then uh, after you, I'll let um, Miss Bonnie say anything she might have to say before I finish closing up. Okay, uh, thank you, Chris. And, and I just again, I want to thank uh, both of you and Bonnie for this opportunity, and also the people who are assembled here today on this um, cold and rainy, you know, uh, Monday morning. Um, I, I, I just, you know, want to know that the biggest lesson that we learned out of all of this is really uh, the strengthening of partnerships and looking and searching for vendors that were more local. Uh, protecting our, our intellectual property and in, in, in doing business with people that we know, like, and trust and, and, and establishing those relationships uh, early on. So uh, we had to change some behaviors in order to do this, but I think we are uh, in a position uh, to now, uh, actually, we've gotten calls uh, to franchise this particular model that we're doing, which I think is great. But, and we're also uh, looking at putting uh, this capability in a small business in uh, Baltimore. They, they're calling who wants to start offering background screening and drug testing and fingerprinting services. And so that's all, if, if it hadn't been for uh, the pivot that, that we made, we would not have been in a position to offer other products and services that we didn't imagine offering before. So it, it helped us get creative. And so uh, one of the things that I want to offer you is the opportunity you know, to take a look at the uh, Zoho platform free of charge for 30 days. Uh, there's a uh, link on my website for a free trial. But we also have another part and we also partner with Zoho. So we actually are able to do the customized development for small business. If they are thinking about making a pivot, if they're thinking about going to a all-in-one solution tech stack for, for their company, uh, that's possible because we have developers who we work with. We, get, we actually do training now. So those things we didn't offer last year, but because of the pivot, we're able to offer that. And the same thing would apply to other businesses once they understand and know how to use this particular software and capabilities. I don't think they would take a look at anything else. And because I searched and examined for the probably for like three or four years for the right tech stack. And I think this is the one for small businesses. So uh, on my website, there are uh, links to uh, not only Zoho, but uh, and also Bamboo HR. That's another partner. Uh, it's it's for larger companies, you know, with you know 500 or more employees. Uh, they have a HR integration solution. And uh, one of the big things is that if you look at my website, one of the biggest partners that we partner with, uh, because of what we're trying to build, I reached out to this company uh, called March Group. They are a Philadelphia Marks Group. The founder, Gene Marks, uh, he's a Wharton School graduate. If you look, if you 
watch Fox News, you, you'll see him uh, just about every week, but he has taken a personal interest in our business model. And they also do training on Zoho. I think Zoho is the platform of the future uh, for small business and nonprofits uh, uh, to really make a complete pivot because there's nothing that you cannot do. They have over 45 uh, platform services and applications within that suite, even the, the video teleconferencing suite. And it's all packaged to that you only pay one price for one license and you get all of the products and services, unlike many others. And so I was even able to save, I was you know paying you know $300 a month for individual pieces. And then I went down to $35 to cover all those other products and services I use. And so I'm a fan. Uh, I don't get paid by, you know, uh, to, to say this uh, through Zoho, although we are a, a, a affiliate, to, you know, in terms of training, but it is a, a great solution. And so uh, if anyone has any questions uh, to me, um, let me know. Is it, does it offer additional security beyond the normal platforms that, that one might be using currently that are spread out all over the place? Is Absolutely. There yeah, but that's a great question. And it does. It's, it's highly encrypted. It, it also offers a capability where you can create your own e-sign documents. And so that e-sign document that you create, it's just like a, a, a blockchain uh, signed document because it, it is completely uh, 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 secure. And so, uh, you know, and so that's how we sign our contracts now. We just, we, we, you take a regular PDF, you know, transport it and, 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 you, and you, you transport it into the uh, sign doc and you, then you send it off uh, for signature. Uh, that's just another great tool. And it offers that level of type of security. So it's all completely encrypted. Even your emails uh, are all encrypted. That's really good to know and affordable. Absolutely. Very affordable. One license costs about $30, but I'm up to five licenses now. So, and, 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 and but, but still it's like, you know, uh, I, and then I allow other individuals in and out of my system as I see fit to do whatever work that needs to be done. So with those licensing licenses, so, Predominantly, I use like a Salesforce. Um, so basically, you're allowed one user per, you know, account that you set up with Salesforce. And when you start getting a lot of different users, you know, the price kind of really skyrockets. So with, with Zoho, is it just one user as well? And yes. then you, you pay per membership per person, so to speak? Absolutely, Charles. And uh, if you look at, at the March group, when you go in there, they are an expert in, in, in Salesforce also as well as Zoho, but they are pushing Zoho now. Salesforce is quite, is quite pricey for small businesses. Zoho is the solution because, uh, and that's why they're, uh, the Mark Group is pushing the Zoho over Salesforce. Thank you. You're welcome. Joel, I'm sure we're gonna be talking about training. Yeah. For our members. <laughs> Absolutely. Joel, thank you for being our guest speaker today. Thank you. This was great information. I'm looking forward to learning more about Zoho and what it can do for a small organization like the Chamber. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Have a great day.